fish. Uh, and I also have 15 years of experience copying files between computer. So now I'm an expert in copying files between computer. And because of this, I'm able to copy files with great um, efficacy. But many people do not have this, ex this great expertise. And so the, um, the ability to copy files effectively is, is not available to them. So I will go through some of the expert methods that we have for copying files between computers and then present some of the inferior approaches that a lot of novices will use and then demonstrate a very prototype software that I, um, it's my idea about how to bring some of these expert skills to novice file copiers. And, and I will also um, propose that, that the, the software that I present it's free software, so of course it's better than all the proprietary software, but I don't think there really is much proprietary software that on its technical merits alone uh, achieves the same effect. We'll go through a few models of how, how to copy files between computers. One way is you have a client, you have two computers, you want to copy two computers. I want to copy the file from this computer to this computer. I just did it. The one way to do it is you have a client then the server's on the client, and it uses some client software to connect to the server software, and it sends the file that way. You can do this with Netcat. Oh, man, make it bigger. You can do this with Netcat. The top one is the client, yeah, and the bottom one's the server. You can do this with SSH. The top one is the client, the bottom one's the server. You can do it with SCP, uh, same thing. If you actually care, I can give you these later. But the point is these are the expert, the expert tools for copying files between computers. And it's all the same method. Um, you run a command on the top, uh, you run a client on one, you run the server on the other. Um, the other way, the opposite is the server to the client, and we just reverse all these previous commands. And so that here the top one is the client. This, so it's starting, it's, it's, uh, I guess, it's listening on a port UDP, I guess I don't really understand this stuff. And then you, you, one's listening and one's connecting and then the file gets sent. And then here it's um, the same, same thing. These are all, you're going uh, from the, the client is, is, um, is telling the server I want to get a file from you in all these cases. Those are the expert methods. But the ones that tend to be marketed towards novices use a, a more complicated approach where you have a computer in the middle and often it's someone else's computer. And uh, not a, not a meter, not, not like not a thing in the sky. It's, it's actually someone else's computer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But one of the nice things about this approach that is not fundamental to this approach is that a lot of times the clients tend to be, uh, oh, wait a minute. I'll get to that later. Yeah, so we're going from a client to a server to a computer. The, the server might be someone else's computer. And there are actually some good reasons for this. If the clients go offline often, it's good, and the server doesn't, then you put, then you can, like, this computer is, I'm on a bus, that computer has a bad internet connection, but we trust that the server is going to be always up. So that's one reason to do it. Another reason, if the clients are behind a firewall, which you could perhaps just reconfigure the firewall, but there's another reason why you might go through the server. Another reason if the clients are behind a net, so you can't, get, you can't actually get the IP address of the, the other one. But in this situation, these two computers are right next to each other. They actually can directly connect to each other. So we don't actually need this client-server client approach. We should be able to go directly from one to the other. And yet people still find that difficult. One of the reasons is all the reasons I showed, all the examples I showed you before require specialized software. Well, maybe we don't think it's specialized, but people who use Windows or Mac might think it's specialized. You need to have Netcat, well, a UDP thingy, or um, uh, SSH client or server. Whereas if the clients are both web browsers, then you figure pretty much everyone's going to have a web browser. And then you just need the server software. So, so I'm pretty sure that this is how these proprietary services as software substitutes work, although I don't really know because I don't, I don't use them. But it seems to me you, you, you install a client on both, or maybe it works in the web browser, and you go from the, the, the one client to someone else's computer back to the other client. And maybe there, there could be some fancy synchronization, but this is really what people care about. A lot of times the synchronization is looking for it. And maybe you have some other, uh, other, other, other person's computer, 
and maybe you have a, another person's other computer and they might have their own separate clients. I mean, of course, they have their own proprietary JavaScript clients too. There are some free implementations of this, I guess we can call it an architecture. Um, you have email, which could be, it's not necessarily free software, but it could be free software. And so I can send an email from, from this computer to this computer and actually, it doesn't have to go through the internet. I could directly connect from this computer to this computer and send an email, but I still need, um, there's still a client server client situation. Or I could use Nextcloud. It's free software, it's great. It could be running on our local network, but you still have to set up the Nextcloud server. And just fundamentally, like, you shouldn't need it. If you're just going from one computer to the other, you shouldn't need it. There are other reasons why you, you might wanna have a central server. If it's just this one-off, I need to copy the file from my presentation from this computer to this computer. I do not need an xCloud account. So I think, like, we have the free software for this approach. We don't have the free software for the client to server, server to client, like direct to a, or one to the other direct. Um, so that's what I made a very rough prototype of that I might have just found a bug in, but whatever. Um, <laughs> And the idea, one of the nice things is the, the, um, the client is a web browser. So only one person, one of the two computers needs to have the specialized software. I'll show you. Okay. Uh, I copied all the commands that I did. Yeah. Can you see this in the back? Great. Uh, this is the help, and currently it's command line. We'll get to that later, but so if I want to receive files, if, the, if I'm gonna, we have client to server and we have server to client. If the files are going from the, and my send files program is always running on the server. So if we're going client to server, we say receive, and it'll start a web server, and the files will go into that directory. Or we say the other way, publish, the files will be published from that directory to the website. And then in the um, publish situation, this is, it's actually using the standard Python um, HTTP.server to, to show these files. And then if you receive, you have this box where you can Say I want to upload a file, and now that's on this computer. We can make it look nicer, and also we don't. We can rewrite it. It's quite short. So now we have the two directions: the server to client to server, or the server to client. We require specialized software on one of them, but not on the other, because the other one's a web browser. And um, the next step, though. Because this, this, now this works. Now I can be an expert co file copier and I can copy files with someone who is not an expert file copier. I, I run the send files program and I, here it prints out all of the um, addresses that you can use to access it. It's running on port 11,000 and it says, well, this is one host name you could use. This is another host name that would work. This is another host name that would work. It looks for all the possible host names that could, could be used. And then I, I have to figure out, well, this is probably the one I'm gonna send to my friend to, to copy it. So if I'm the expert file copier, I can exchange files with a, a novice file copier now. But I want it to be that two novice file copiers can exchange files. And for that, I want it not to be a command line interface, but I want it to be a context menu. I want it to be like this. And I don't actually use a desktop environment, so I haven't written this part yet. I want it to be, you right click on the, the, the directory, and, in, and here's the, the context menu, and I want to add a new option to the context menu for publish files and receive files. And it should be pretty simple. I've been reading documentation, but I don't have the desktop manager, desktop environment installed, so I, I can't test it. So, <laughs> so maybe, some, maybe this weekend one of, one of you can help me do this. And this will be great, because now um, the, this program send files, and we could, of course, rewrite it. It's a pretty, pretty short program. Um, it can do the client to server and the server to client. Uh, it, it uses free software. 
The clients are web browsers, so only one of the computers needs specialized software. And we'll have it as a context menu, so these, so just for basic file copying at least, you don't need to learn expert skills. And I think this doesn't even exist in, in proprietary software, that you can do this direct connection between computers so easily. The one thing I was discussing with people, the one thing I've come across is Apple, what was it called, a, a, AFS? A, Apple File, what? Apple File Protocol, where, where one, one of them, it'll be, um, one of the computers will mount the other computer's directory as a network file system, but not NFS. And, but apparently people still, like, if you have a context menu, you right click to share this file, it either goes through, like, email or Dropbox or something like that. They don't have just this direct thing. So, so someone, someone, I hope someone is going to help me uh, make a context menu. Thank you. forwarding access, or if you don't have um, routing in the network? This is one of the good reasons to have a server in the middle. But you can change the port number, too. Okay. But you do need to have a port. There's no way to circumvent <laughs> having that. Well, any network yeah. connection has a port. Yeah. Uh, but, what, what I mean well, is, like, yeah. a port that might not be, the port might not be available to you on a, someone yeah. else's network. As I said, yeah. if, if the firewall is blocking blocking the access and it's too hard to figure that out. That would be a good reason, actually a good reason to have this, this server. Of course, maybe it's not good to have the firewall set up that way too. Okay. Thank you. Hi there, thank you so much for your proposal and for showing this off. Your di diagrams are excellent. Um, I have lots of technical questions for you and various opinions about how, like, how this could be done. And so what is the venue that you prefer? Like, where should we hash this out? Uh, what, what's a good workflow for you so that we can, like, bring this to everybody? I don't remember whether I made a mailing list yet, but I can make a mailing list. It'll be like send files at fits.ftp.sh, something like that. We can do that. Are you on Mastodon or something where you'll announce uh, when no, we have this? No, I use email. But so is there an existing mailing list no, that you're I'll make on one. where I'll, you'll announce let's this? Let's see, how can I, but for the people who are watching and stuff, what's a good way for me to tell, and how do about... You, do you use text messaging? No, I use email. Will you email me and then I can tweet about it? Oh yeah, I'm, I'm happy for you to tweet, yeah. Okay, cool. No, yeah. we'll, we'll do that, we'll get Great. the message out. But also, anyone who's watching and, and doesn't like use this proprietary service as a software substitute for surveillance, or they're not also used by this proprietary service as a software substitute. You can also just like wait a few, wait a few days, and it'll show up on fits.ftp.sh. I'll put the information there. Awesome. Thank you so much. And I'll use enemies of Carlotta as the mailing list manager, in case anyone's curious. This seems really interesting, and thank you for putting it together. Um, have you heard of a piece of software called Onion Share that allows doing similar things of basically um, setting up a quick server on your um, own computer and giving an address where someone can drop a file to you. I'm not. That sounds great. And it can go both ways. You can serve and... Yeah, you can you can publish or you can receive um, and it's all Torrified and all that stuff. Okay. So well, so that's great for... It's just uh, it's something you might want to look yeah, into to give you some they, ideas. They're, they're, they're complementary. This one is for internal networks and that one would be for, well, getting around firewalls or external networks. Yeah. Or internet networks, yeah. Onion share. Uh, I have. Oh, I have. All right. Thank you. I have had for quite a while the problem of moving video files from the computer of a, so let's say, novice user to my computer. And the video files might be as big as 10 gigabytes. And uh, 
I have I have yet to come up with a satisfactory solution to that problem where where someone that I don't personally know but who I I know is not particularly computer savvy has got the video file and they need to get it to me o over the internet and to to move that big of a file uh in a, in a way that is not threatening to uh, the person on the other end of the wire yeah. uh, it, it is, the, is the challenge. So it sounds like you can't reasonably ask the person to install something special. And you Absolutely can't not. Do. So the current version won't work for that, but we could set up something where it chunks the, it would, it would run JavaScript and it would chunk the upload. I'm like, if, if there's any way of uploading a 10 gigabyte file to some, someone else's computer, Run by one of those surveillance companies. There must, like, they must use JavaScript in the browser that does this somehow. Oh, great! Yeah, yeah, great. Uh, he says we're going to talk about it on the mailing list, so you should join. Them. Yeah. Well, it hasn't been created yet, but you know, we can we can also have a we can decide on the name. You know, it's pretty generically named now. Send files. We could call it something else. What, what should we call it? Copying. I really like the name "copying files between computers." <laughs> it's a bit long. C C F B C. No. We could. Start doing that. Nobody. Nobody. You'll get into like. People won't find it when they Google it. We can just use a random name. Or search it or whatever. My I have another software called Spinach Boomerang, and it's just a couple words. I have a. I just. Checked some random words in the words file, and I thought it's had a good, a good amount of syllables. So we can discuss this, and it'll anyway. Whatever, whatever it is, <laughs> I'll put it on fritz.ftp.sh, and then should I say your name? Yeah. But you're actually I can give you the, your uh, your the the account information that they should look for. That's right. But what is it? Uh, yeah, I'm at Ryan Pryor on Twitter. Ryan Pryor on Twitter will. Uh, disseminate the, um, the information as well. I'm going to follow up about this. I also think Onion Share is really cool. Like, there's all kinds of things we can talk about. So everybody that's got questions and suggestions for like how to solve this overall problem, we're going we're gonna to nail it. Um, I'm really excited about this because this is such an obvious thing that has gone unsolved for so long, right? So I'm at Ryan Pryor, R-Y-A-N-P-R-I-O-R on Twitter, and I'm going to tweet about this once we have the mailing list and stuff set up. If you prefer Mastodon, I'm Ryan Pryor, spelled the same way, at mastodon.social. Uh, so yeah, uh, get at me and we're going to make this happen. I'm really excited. Okay then.